Hello there, my name is Sleepy the Slime King. If you're watching this video, chances are you're like me. You've found that archer builds are very viable in Elden Ring and you're finding out that you're running out of arrows really fast. So you'd like to find an easier method to become more efficient in your arrow gathering process? Well, you're in luck. It just happens that I am in need of a lot of arrows for my next boss fight and I noticed there are not really a lot of videos out there that go into detail about arrow farming methods. So I decided that I am going to go ahead and make my own video about it, explaining my farming method and some of the other methods that are out there uh, in terms of what the pros and cons are, are of them and how you can go about doing them. Now, keep in mind, this is an early game uh, farming method, so you don't even really have to go and fight Marget to even do this. Uh, but there might be letter, better methods later on. I myself am pretty far into the game, and I, even I still find myself coming back and doing this method uh, pretty often, though. So let's hop into it. To start off, let's talk about your options for arrows. You have two options, and that's to buy or to craft. You can purchase basic arrows at most merchants, just like this one. What and if you go it? into his inventory, you can see that he sells normal arrows for 20 runes a piece. To make it easier, I'm going to explain everything in terms of 100 arrows because the max amount of each type of arrow one can hold at a time is 99, and you're mostly going to be crafting in about uh, in terms of 100s because you craft in tens. So to buy 100 basic arrows from this merchant will cost you about 2,000 runes, and that's about the same price it is at most merchants. That's not relatively pricey, and I do recommend you buy plenty of these arrows to have in reserve as they're slightly better than the crafted ones, and you're going to be using this, these for more important fights. Uh, where the crafter ones are a little bit weaker and then wouldn't be nearly as ideal. Now, you might be asking, Goodbye well, Sleepy, if bot arrows are slightly better, then why craft? Well, besides the obvious of it being free, bot arrows cannot be turned into specialty arrows, from what I know. You have to craft specialty arrows, and those are the good stuff. And I will explain why you should also be crafting the weaker, weaker basic ones, the just the standard bone arrows, like these ones here the bone arrow with fletched you're gonna to want to craft these also but I'll, I'll talk about that later but first let me explain what we're gonna be farming we're gonna be farming the specialty arrows just like these ones over here but specifically we're gonna be farming blood bone arrows that are fletched and the reason being for that uh, the reason I recommend them is blood arrows have a very wide uh, range of use as bleed is very effective against most humanoid bosses and dragons and you find a lot of them in these games because uh, if you stack up bleed on a boss, uh, once the bleed meter is full, you take out a big chunk out of a boss's health, and they're, it's really effective for archer builds. So they're good to use, and I recommend having a lot of them if you're wanting to have a decent arsenal for your archer. Uh, so to start off, we're going to go after the feathers, the flight peons in the, that crafting recipe, because we're going to be going... I'm going to show you how to uh, collect each one of these, uh, the thin bones, blood bros, and flight pinions, and what my methods for them are. My go-to place here is the Church of Ella, which is right outside spawn. So you really don't have to go far to even start doing this. Church of Ella is just literally right down the hill. Uh, what we're going to be farming first is birds and eagles to, in order to get uh, fight pinions. And they can be kind of annoying to farm, especially because they're mostly on cliff edges. So when you get close to them, you can just scare them off. And even if you do manage to kill them before they do, they can sometimes roll off the edge and you miss the loot. So this is my solution, and it is really, really a simple one. Just shoot them. You might think that's a waste of arrows, but let me explain. Most animals I have come across have a certain detection range when you are inside that range uh, attacking an animal. Uh, when you attack them inside that range, you will cause uh, any nearby ones to flee. So. If you are outside that range, you can attack as many as you like from a distance, and they won't flee. This is super important, because the number one reason your farming is going to lose efficiency is the animals running away and wasting your time. So, there might be a spell that works similarly to this, but I did some testing with a friend of mine, and we have found that if you cast a spell on an animal and it dies, any uh, animals that are near the, the target of that spell will end up fleeing, uh, fleeing, so there might be one that doesn't make them flee like a bow does, but from so far we haven't found any that do that. So you can do your own experimenting and see if you're able to find that, but from what I do I just normally shoot him because the return investment is way greater. Uh, 
and arrows seem to be the only thing that I really found that have that effect. So I've gone ahead and put all my crafting resources away so I can show you just how many uh, I get from each one of these runs. So I'm going to show you first. I'm going to hop on towards, and we're going to go start going down this hill here, down towards the coast this way. Pull out this. I have a few arrows on me. I would recommend you having some arrows on you first if you're going to be doing this one, this run here, because birds are definitely a lot easier to shoot. Uh, but if you need to, just go kill a few uh, things to get like, about like 30 starter arrows, and that should get you uh, get you going on this farm. Uh, you go down right here. There's immediately going to be two eagles on the rock. There's going to be some more up this way, but I don't recommend going after them just because most of those fall. Or, and they're not really worth going for. These two almost never fall. So just shoot these ones or two real quick. They're, they're always gonna be just a little bit extra. There's a giant gonna be right below us. You're gonna wanna hop down here, kill the giant or run past him. I usually kill him because it's a little bit easier because then he doesn't bug me later. time one at a time one two three four five six seven and the reason i'm counting these shots is just to show you with seven arrows that means that that is less than one feather that i just used i'm gonna get back i even didn't even get that many this run but just from these ones alone i'm gonna get three feathers and that right there is 30 arrows so from using seven arrows, I just got back 30, which means that I gained 23 arrows just from that little bit I used. So now I'm gonna hop back on Torrent. That is not the only bit of this run for this area, because if you go down the beach a little bit further, you will find little beach birds, these little puffin-like birds. You wanna shoot these too, because they also drop those same feathers. And there are a lot of them on this beach, so they make it really worth it to go for. Just go through the area. I missed one of those little things right here. I missed it again. Hop on up here, grab those. Right. Go down the beach a little bit further. There's two more right here. One more on the rack. Couple more right here. Getting a lot of feet instead of feathers, but that's not, that's not that bad. And do, 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 do. grab all these. A couple more here. And then the last three are right here. All right, now I go collect these last one. And just like that, now if I go into item crafting and I look at the, the arrows, just from that one run, I now have 16 feathers. And that's enough to make 160 arrows. And normally I get probably double that. I, this is actually a pretty small run. If you want to increase your output just slightly, you can do what I... I don't know if it's worth it sometimes, but you can use a silver pickled fowl food, which say that 10 times fast. But if you use those, it'll increase your item discovery, which basically means that instead of every uh, seven out of 10 dropping a feather, you're more likely to get nine out of 10 to drop a feather. So it increases your rate by about 25%. So you get a little bit more out of it. It's just a matter of if you really find it worth it. I would say if you really want to use those, save them for bones, because bones are the hard one, which is what we're going to do next. There's also, you can go further down the beach there. Don't worry about it. There aren't any more birds down the beach that way. All of them are right here. So after you finish running that, you just go right back up to Church of Ella, reset, and you just keep doing this until you have enough feathers that you like. Now I'm gonna show you where I farm light bones. Light bones are, like I said, are a little tougher ingredient to farm mainly because 10 arrows requires three light bones. 
which means your gain isn't really nearly as high, but you're still getting a significant gain from what you waste. As long as you get at least six bones per 10 arrows, you're doubling your current arrows. So where you wanna go, where I like to go, I go right up here to the Stormhill Shack and I go south from there. There's a big herd of deer that like to run around there and it usually ends up dropping about 25 deer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop on Torrent and we're gonna start making it this way. And while these guys show up, this is a good time for me to talk about farming wolves instead of deer if you're going for light bones. After I deal with these guys. As you can see, they're also dropping light bones. There's one there. I can't actually hit them. If I'm not bad. There we go. But those four guys, and you see he dropped a bone also. So. This is a method I've heard people talking about uh, that because wolves, uh, they also drop light bones and they don't run away. They can, they'll run at you and you can just melee at them so you don't have to waste any resources trying to fight them. But it makes them a little easier because you don't have to chase down the deer. The reason I don't go after wolves and the problem with them is that their bone drop rate is a lot less frequent. Uh, so even if you find a really large group of like 30 wolves, you can kill 10 of them and be lucky to get 3 bones. I've killed 15 before and not gotten a single one, so their their rates are a lot lower. But you also get runes, so you can kind of farm for runes also for doing that at the same time. You don't get a lot of runes for wolves, but it's still a little bit. I just found it takes a lot longer to get bones, so that's why I choose to not do it. So we can go down here. There's also an option where you can... I've seen a lot of people talk about this one, and it's usually like, Oh, I want to find a we uh, method to farm bones, and people go like, Oh, just buy them. Uh, so there's an option that if you look on the map here, from Stormhill Shack, you go along the road. There's two guys here that you uh, can run past, but you'll find the War Master here in the shack. If you go there at night uh, and rest at the, the race and reset it, then there's a boss that spawns there. The War Master himself won't be there, and then you can fight a boss, and the boss will drop an item that you can give to the, the two merchants uh, that are glued to, together, the two merchants that are one merchant. Uh, at the table of lost grace so and you give it to them and then they will sell bones they'll sell light bones and hefty bones but problem with that is that one bone costs 150 a bone so you would need 4,500 runes to make 100 arrows so it's not very cheap it's super pricey and honestly I don't really find it worth it but if you have the runes to spare go nuts but honestly it's really expensive so what i do is well i'm already too far down from where i would normally go take out your take out my bow i just start right here because i can just shoot all these guys and they don't even care i just dropped four arrows and look at that there's three bones right there four arrows and i immediately got 10 arrows back so that means i just gained six arrows so it, it definitely works. It's a very good method. The the rest of the herds up here, you don't actually have to shoot the ram like I just did because they aggro on you, so you can just melee them. But I normally can't really tell a difference from a range. So I don't really care. So I just shoot them all. And the less arrows you can try to waste here, the better. I just notice how none of them are accurate. Oop, a little bit of lag. They might move around a little fast sometimes, but they normally don't aggro. And run away. Say aggro, but like see they'll they'll move weirdly because the space now freely opens and they have to be like, oh, this is where I should be standing. But I'm not standing there. This isn't where I normally go, and it usually gets me a good bone, a good bone return. I normally go during the day too, because this is easier to seal them. Shoot them all, get as many as you can. Make sure you collect all of them. And grab things. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that's if I'm playing on PC and this area is super laggy because of the weather. You can also shoot these little guys here because they also have a chance of dropping bones in the same way that deer do, and they apply the same method that they don't run away if you don't get close to them. So it's generally a good spot. And there's actually a couple that I missed over here. If you grab these. All right, and just after that little bit, I now have. Let me go back to item crafting. Sorry. I have now have enough bones to create. So 27 divided by three. I'm trying to think how many that is. Um, I can do math. That's nine. So I can make 90 arrows just from that little bit. And I only use probably 25 arrows at most. And look at that. I, there's also another one in this. So I actually got more than that. And then, yeah, you can use a pickle foot and you probably get probably 10 more bones per run that time. I don't remember if... If you go to a site of grace when you have a pickled foot active, if you run there, I know it stays active and you rest. But if you if you uh, fast travel there, I don't know if you keep the effect. You might not. So I would say you guys can test that out yourself and figure that out if you would like to risk it because I just don't have enough I want to use right now. And then now that we've done that, my last farming method is going to be for the blood roses. Now, blood roses are a little bit easier you just have to do a few steps before you can get them easily. So you can farm blood roses really easily right over here at Fort ha uh, Hagit or Hate, I, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you just go ahead and travel right there. If you haven't already been here, what I recommend you do is you're going to want to go do a quest line before you start farming here. Also, if you don't already have the cookbook to craft bloodborne arrows or blood bone arrows, but not bloodborne arrows. You can find that, uh, I believe, from the merchant that is right here in the woods. I believe he sells them, uh, sells the book. I am not 100% certain on that because it's been a long time, but I believe he's the one that sells the, the, the book for the blood, uh, blood bone arrows because the blood, bloody area is literally this floor right here. But if you haven't been here yet, go to up here by the Third Church of America, America and go right here to this stone structure here. On top of that structure is an NPC that you're going to want to talk to because he's going to give you a quest related to this area. I'm going to keep it spoiler free uh, if you haven't already done it. And after you finish the quest line from him, it makes this fort a lot safer, which makes it easier to farm this stuff easily. Because before, it's way more dangerous and there's a lot more enemies outside specifically. And, and after you get the quest done, all the enemies remain inside. But the run is really simple. You get about um, on at least five blood roses per run, and each blood rose makes ten arrows. So you can do this run really quickly. It's generally not too difficult. Let's just swap over to my scythe and go up right up here. Immediately right at the top of the castle, there's going to be a bush right here, right next to the stairs. Blood rose right there. You're going to go up the stairs into the main room. I'm going to run past these guys for now just to not waste time fighting them. There is a bush right here, there is a bush right here, and there is a bush right here. Each bush has a chance of dropping, I think, up to three blood roses, but most of the time they're just going to drop one. And then back onto Torrent. Then you can go right around the back of this place. There is a mushroom right here. I normally just grab it because it's mushrooms. Uh, and then you go up right up here, up onto this ledge here. There is another bush right here, and that is your fifth bush. And then, another thing you can grab while you're doing this run is there are bird leaf flowers that spawn in a clump of five right here. So every time you do this run, you can get your bird leaf flower collection going up to allow you to be able to summon more uh, and just make a ton of those. I have tons of them from how many times I've done this run. And just like that, it's very simple. And you can just fast travel right back here if you don't want to run all the way back down. I generally do that because it's quicker. Uh, and that's it. That is my method for farming arrows. And now that I have done that quick method, I think I have five from what I just did. I don't think I got more than that. Yeah, I'll sometimes get eight or 10 sometimes, depending if someone will give me extra. But most of the time you get five every run. Uh, and lastly, before I wrap up, 
You can also do the same farming method for crafting great arrows, which you don't really unlock that until later in the game, after you've made it past a lot of the world, which I will not show too much of right now. Uh, so if you can do that later on, great arrows actually require hefty bones to craft rather than light bones. And a great place to farm for those, if you're watching for that, is right in here. There's tons and tons of boars that spawn right in this area, and they're really, uh, and they aggro right on you, so you can just melee them. And that's a great way to get hefty bones really easily. There's also a couple bears right in here that you can fight, and they have a chance of dropping hefty bones, but boars tend to drop them a little more often, so those work really well. And that is it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you if this helped you out in any way and you'd like to see more walkthroughs in the future. Uh, and let me know in the comments if this helped you. And if you know a better method that I haven't found, please feel free to comment and tell, let me know. Uh, and if it's good, I might make a follow-up video. Well, that is about it. As always, everybody, sweet dreams. Mm -hmm.